All right, Wes and John, welcome to Kicking Tables. Thanks so much to, for joining us. Uh, we're going to talk about your game, Questros, which hits Kickstarter tomorrow. You must be excited, nervous, all that stuff. Looking forward to it. Been through this a few times, and it's always nervous, but it, more exciting than nervous. Yeah. So tell us about Questros. What kind of game is this? Questros is a uh, interesting blend of different card game mechanics. So it's a tarot deck that has a card game functionality for two to six players that's kind of the main concept behind it is the card game but then there's also a solo game called Eros quest and it could also be used in tandem with classic rpgs or even zines to help accentuate an already fun game well what, what's the gameplay itself what are you doing in the game uh so in the questros game itself you it's basically a trick-taking game so uh, two to six players take turns playing cards um in a number of different class suits and then there's a special class of suits called quest cards, which are kind of like the, the highest ranking suits that can outrank the others. But then there is some individualistic card abilities that can tamper with the game. So a lot of mechanics that play up as well as a bidding strategy at the beginning of each round. Okay, so it's a, it is a competitive game. Yeah, it's a player versus player trick-taking card game for okay. the two to six player version. Awesome, yeah. cool. All right. Well, since since we're lucky enough to have John here, I actually want to ask, you know, where did you draw your your inspiration for the art for these cards? They're absolutely gorgeous cards. Thank you. Um, so Wes is uh, a phenomenal art director for uh, Questeros, and I think in general because I've seen the work that he's done in his other games, and um, he he wanted to pull heavily from the Rider Waite uh, tarot deck, which. Um, you know, so some of the color palettes I borrowed from there and also there's a very specific body language and positioning of certain items within the cards. There's some very, uh, you know, you, ha you have to adhere to some stuff in order yeah. to have them be a true tarot deck. So I basically followed his lead. Um, and Wes, you know, is a budding artist himself who recently upgraded to a tablet. And uh, he was actually kind enough to send me concept sketches of what he wanted to see out of each card. Okay. which uh, just took out a ton of guesswork for me. Um, I've been doing client work for a while, and it was immensely helpful. And um, I kind of just tried to enhance what he gave me and, and look at the Rider weight stuff and kind of keep that in the back of my head and then try to give it sort of a fantasy twist kind of thing. Awesome. Okay. So those are, yeah. so those are, those are cards from the game? So that's uh, the, uh, the ones a card from the game and the ones from the, the standard tarot deck. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can see that the position, the character positioning, and, and similarities, which which looks absolutely fantastic. And John's got this awesome '80s comic style vibe that he puts into this particular line of work, and it really does make it stand out from other fantasy games in a way that I, I hadn't seen. So when he approached me to do the art for this game, I was looking at a different couple concepts, but then he did a couple of sketches and just said, "Hey, this is what I'd run with," and I was blown away, and, I, and we went forward from there. So was that your inspiration for creating this game? Was you, you heavily into sort of the, the tarot card? And figure I got to be able to do something with this deck, or did it come from somewhere else? Uh, I was working on a couple of different tangents. I'd been playing a lot of trick-taking games with the family and Wizard and Euchre and Hearts were kind of our, our main go-tos. Okay. And so I drew a lot of inspiration from Wizard, but I, I didn't want to just make another Wizard. But I always thought, what if wizards had powers? What if I could make a deck about wizards with powers? But then I came across the fact that uh, tarot was originally a trick-taking game as well before it became known as a divination tool. And so blending those two together was a lot of fun. And then, of course, everything I do is always in the fantasy setting, so I had to put that spin on it. Well, let's let's dive into uh, the fact that uh, you actually designed the game. Uh, you designed the cards to be a game, but also they still have the divination properties of a tarot, as as you're saying on your campaign. Uh, explain that. Like, dive into that a little bit. What? Uh, why did you want to make sure it still held all the divination properties of a tarot card? Well, one of the things I love doing with the games that I make is trying to find ways to cross paths into other avenues. So when I did um, Legends of Novus, I tried to hit on kind of Dungeons of the Dragons players. When I did Die in the Dungeon, I wanted to hit on um, classic RPG dice crossover. And so when I did Questeros, I wanted to think of how could I involve another niche that maybe not, might not be into board games, but could be. Right. And, and so Tarot was a huge draw for that. And uh, just being able to draw on that already predetermined style and um, kind of iconography of that deck made it really not easy, but um, a special way to create an art form for it. And John was instrumental in uh, turning those around even better. Yeah, so John, how, how hard was that, keeping the cards, uh, like, 
doing your own art style, your own your own characters, but maintaining that tarot card look and feel. Um, I mean, not too tough. You know, a, a lot of times when you're doing reference by sight on a piece, um, it can be – the one thing I did have to do a little bit of was just some surface-level research about the significance of the different things that were included on each card. Right. Um, what were some know, of those things? Oh, uh, You have to make sure that certain hands are up versus down. Sometimes okay. characters are – they're fa they're facing away from the viewer as opposed to looking straight on towards them. Okay. Um, okay. Also, like different animals and compositional choices about like one thing is in the is in the middle foreground and another thing is in the background. Or there's castles versus forests versus ocean. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot of because they all have significance within the tarot reading side of things. And Wes had expressed that you know he was sharing things with the tarot community, and uh, you know he I occasionally we did get some feedback where I had to change a couple things. <laughs> Um, but, uh, mostly, yeah, I just tried to like, kind of have fun with it. And, um, as long as Wes was happy, I was happy and I was having a good time working on the stuff. So it didn't, it, it wasn't too tough. So all those little points, like someone facing backwards, having an animal in the foreground background, your cards also have all those little points in it. Those are the things you had to, you had to maintain using your own artwork. Is that, is that what you had to do? Yeah. Like it's not a hundred percent out on, we still have our own spins on it. And okay. some, sometimes when they had a fish, we might, uh, John might put it in a dolphin, but it represents the same kind of concept. Sure. So somebody that is a hundred percent engrossed in a Rider White tarot deck may have some squabbles about how it looks, but anybody who's just generally into tarot, you can see the identity. You can see the, um, comparison very easily. Um, you know, sometimes when they wanted to have a dog, we, you know, John has a hyena or when they had a white rabbit, we had a black rabbit. So we just did our own little thing, but en enough that it's different, but still the same. Right. Right. It, it can still be used as a divination deck based Absolutely. on your art. That's actually pretty cool. That's actually and really cool. Originally, I was just going to do the 22 cards with art and then icons for the rest, but John's a really good negotiator, and he was able to, to work with me to make something that worked with a budget for a card game that we could get line art for every single one of the 78 cards that's individual instead of just having some generic icons. So that was a that's a big step for a tarot deck is to go from icons to images. So that's a big selling point when we do launches at yeah. 78 individual art cards. Right, and now... now just before we move on to some other topics, uh, what about the names of the cards? Because tarot cards have names, specific names. Yeah. Do you maintain the same names or do you have you given them all their own names? Uh, so for all the suits and the quest cards, all have been given their own names, which are very well related to the traditional names. So for example, the joke or the fool in the original Rider weight is the jester okay. in this game, where the magician is the warlock, or the um, the emperor is the dwarf king. So I tried to, you know, the imagery still stuck. The names can still be tethered. And if you go to my website, I've got every single one of my cards with a subtext of every one of the original names. What's so anybody who's into tarot yeah. can reference. That's all. And your suits, like I, I think you have blades instead of swords. So yeah, that, that kind of instead thing. of swords and staves instead of wands. So just right. kind of changing the name. The only one that stayed the same was um, uh, cups, because hard to change. I didn't want to call them grails or anything different. Yeah. So, so kept the cups. So now you need to go down to your your local fortune teller and tell them to start using your deck and see how things go. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, John's been part of a few of the groups that I've joined for Facebook and on Instagram. I always hashtag tarot, and you get some people that are um, in the tarot field that say, wow, what is this deck? Where can I buy yeah. it? And oh, that's, that's awesome. kind of what we're looking for, right? That's, that's kind of the, the pinch point where yeah, you yeah. get conversion. That's but really cool. Two, two revenue yeah. streams there. You've got your board games right. and your uh, your divination, divination stream of revenue to come in for that. That's fantastic. Yeah, and if you get the people that have the impact in those communities to share the deck, that's where you really get your yeah. your influence, right? That's what yeah. we're looking for. That is really cool. So, yeah, so you mentioned before there's a solo challenge mode, the the Eros Quest, which is Questeros, obviously, yeah. you know, <laughs> transposed. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that and how that plays. Yeah, and uh, well, maybe we'll talk about the Amgram later too. That's oh, kind of a yeah. soft spot. But um, <laughs> uh, Eros Quest is one of my favorite parts about this deck. I didn't anticipate that being the case because I, I built it around being a multiplayer game. But, you know, in this pandemic COVID world that we're in, solo yeah. games are hugely growing. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that yes. this deck did something with it. But yeah, I Everyone wants that. the solo campaign. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I couldn't turn Questeros itself. You know, it's a trick-taking game. I didn't want to just make you play against an AI where you automate some points and play against your high score. Lots of games do that, and I've done that with Duel of the Dragons before. So I wanted to create a completely independent game that built upon all of the different um, suits 
but then you're going on the fool's journey. Um, as, as some people may know from traditional tarot decks, you're actually encountering every one of the quest cards mm. or the major arcana in a tarot deck and building the story where the fool is trying to get to the end and go through a cycle. That's cool. That's cool. Now, um, development as you're developing this did you have any specific struggles as you're creating this game like what did you have to overcome to to make it work and and like from from concept to finished thing that you there, there were there hurdles you you found yourself in yeah i mean the great part about building on the foundation of trick-taking games is there's a plenty of uh, reference material and learning material out there games that have done really really well whether it's skulking or hearts or wizard or all these other trick-taking games but playing online is a big part of it so Pardon me, Tabletop Simulator, and I John join in in a few sessions to give that a whirl, and I played quite a few sessions with other individuals, and then um, playing my own games with family from time to time, or just with myself around the table, just finding out what works and what doesn't. I think the biggest obstacle is the visuals, making sure that the icons were readable, and that there was a, a differentiation between class cards and quest cards, okay. and that the rules, rules were legible. Uh, you, you have to really give people a deck, tell them to play it, and then find out if the rules work a few times before you can get it right. And uh, John, what was the most difficult card in the deck for you to get right? Oof. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's tough because it's it's really like which ones really take the most time. I mean, yeah. Um, boo, 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 boo. the which what's the name of the one card that has the devil and the snake with the golden um chimera the deck, of, the deck, of deck of fates card yeah that one that one took a little while because it had a bunch of different figures it had a bunch of different things it had this cascade of cards that all have different runic symbols on them uh, I wanted to make everything look like it was glowing you know ah, okay um the dragon also which is the the earth card right Wes. Uh, it is the the world card. The world, so, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Last card of the deck. yeah, yeah. That one was also uh, a lot. That one was really fun, but that one took a little bit more because I had to mess with perspective a little bit more because everything okay. else is kind of zoomed in. Everything else is like on plan on our like it looks like our reality, but the one that I it's like an it's this dragon in outer space, like you know, encircling <laughs> a globe with its claws and everything. Yeah, there's like, yeah, the, yeah, there's all this crazy body language and there's, you know, uh, constellations scattered all over the Astros behind it and stuff. So it's just a little bit more intense. <laughs> now, yeah. now have those cards become some of your favorites or what's your favorite card? Oh, for me, the, my favorite card is the first card. It's Eros on the cliff with, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's got to, yeah, because, no, well, first of all, it was the first one I did when I officially came onto the project, which was a nice milestone. All right, cool. And, well, it's um, a nice card. it's, He's uh, the box yeah, and then that, that's the cool, that's the reason it's my favorite one is because that, that first card, um, it was, you know, my official ushering into working with Wes, uh, ended up being the main <laughs> character for the game, the protagonist for the solo adventure. He's on the cover of the box. He makes cameos on a handful of other cards. I just love Eros the Goblin. Nice. So, you know. <laughs> And and Wes, do you have a favorite card? Yeah, I mean, if if I didn't count Eero the Goblin, because Eero is the embodiment of the entire deck, my second favorite would be um, uh, the the Dark Elves, the the, the uh, court cards, all four of them of the Dark Elves that John put together. He did a really awesome. nice um, dark envisionment of those, and I've always loved the Dark Elf setting. So, no, oh, wow, who doesn't like Dark Elves? Come on. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the, the dark elf knight is coming down um, like a vertical uh, pit in a cave where the moon is perfectly framed in the opening of the cave, and he's riding Ooh. a giant tarantula. Um, he's got like a cloak on. Yeah, it looks dope, man. It's cool. Man, even if you don't play the game, these cards sound exactly. amazing. <laughs> that's the whole right? size in frames. I think you're in good shape. Yeah, full size tarot cards, and, and that's where it kind of tethers into the RPG fate deck. Because if you just yeah. use this as a fate deck or tarot deck either way um you can use it to help generate encounters or to influence uh decisions on gameplay or bonuses so there's going to be some rules on my website for that as well nice awesome so talk to us a little bit about the campaign um do you guys have any uh stretch goals that you can share with us any any like special cards that are only going to be available through the campaign anything like that I've run quite a few Kickstarters, and John, you know what it's like to to try to run stretch goals and keep people interested. I decided I'm going to try a different avenue this time around, learning from Lance Mixter and Gray Fox Games and what they did with Ragnarok. I've seen a few other campaigns do it as well, so more of a timed release type of thing instead of a stretch goal. So no matter okay. how many people join the game, uh, every day I'll reveal a new card, which is basically an add-on 
to the original deck, which will be a Kickstarter exclusive, and it gives players a way to kind of represent a character while playing the game. Um, so that will be kind of be, each character will be unlocked throughout the campaign, and then there's one other secret that I'll unlock halfway through. Awesome. So some fun things to put in, no actual stretch goals, because everything I want to do is built into the box already, but just those extra characters, kind of like if you think of Santorini or um, games like that where you can enhance a game without changing the entire game you just kind of give an extra power to sure yeah. now you mentioned kickstarter exclusive is that going to be the game itself is a kickstarter exclusive or these these extra cards you're talking about uh the extra cards and the extra tokens will be kickstarter exclusives and okay. that's to try to encourage getting as much funding before having yep. to produce it instead of after the fact but the the tarot deck itself and everything else that uh, comes with it, the, there's a token and a score pad and a rule book. That's all part of the uh, retailer pledge and will be available after the campaign. Uh, yeah, so talk about uh, after the campaign, after you've uh, sent it out to your backers, are you going to get into retail? Or is it going to be available online? What's the plan there? Uh, so usually the kind of the pattern that I've been getting into is um, if I make X amount of games for backers, uh, I'll usually do somewhere in the vicinity of uh, double or just less than double of a production run of that, and I'll work those through distribution partners or individual retailers, either during the campaign or after the campaign, plus my own website for post-campaign sales. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you about Questeros. Before we let you go, I want both of you to tell us just something about the game that just sell it to our audience. Tell us why we should get this game. I'm going to let both of you talk towards it. I'll let you go first, John. Um, this game does so many things. Even if you never play with another human being, you have a solo game and 78 cards worth of artwork to look at. Mm. I mean, I know what Wes <laughs> is charging for, it, but it's 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 got so much value in this tiny box you can throw in your backpack. Um, and if you're a tarot fan, it's, it'll be a great addition to your collection. And uh, yeah, just to, the artwork really for me, like, you know, Wes didn't want to go all the way with it, but after looking at the amount of, you know, the, the kind of work I was creating for the for the Major Arcana cards, I was like, look, man, like, let me just, let's figure out a way to make this happen because I think if we go all the way with this thing, it'll really blow people's socks off. And I think we totally got there. So, you know, yeah, I, there's there's no reason not to get it. It's, it's great. And also the multiplayer is awesome. Yeah. My, my spouse and my best friend and I played it. Um, we have a little gaming bubble and um, they both absolutely loved it. And I think it's a great game. It's, it's super fun. And for those who uh, have always been uh, fascinated by tarot but never actually had a deck, what better get deck to start with, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Wes, give us uh, give us a thirty second sell on your game. Yeah, I mean, uh, John hit it on the head with the price point. Uh, when you're talking about tarot, I, I could have milked it and gone the traditional tarot route. Some people sell decks like this, or even containing less than this. For as much as you know, fifty, sixty dollars US for a single deck. Uh, my goal is to sell it for twenty-four dollars. That includes all four of these modes. So I think wow. just the, the pure value that you can get. The goal is to produce more than just a small print run, so that it makes the cost lower. But I think regardless, even if I only printed a thousand, it should about break even and give everybody a, an awesome value for a beautifully illustrated deck with four different options. Oh, no, seriously, that cost point is fantastic. I expected more. Yeah. But uh, Wes, John, thank you so much for joining us to tell us about Questeros. Uh, the game sounds amazing. I can't wait to see it myself, the artwork. I've already seen some of the artwork, and it is gorgeous. Uh, Thanks, so, John, good job on that. And, uh, gentlemen, good luck with the campaign starting tomorrow. Everybody go check it out on Kickstarter. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having thank us. You. All right, thanks everybody for watching. It's been a pleasure to be on OMG Nexus. This has got some fantastic videos. I've seen some of his other work and really encourage you to watch those other videos. Uh, if you get a chance, check out Costeros on Kickstarter. I love talking about it. And if you have any questions, just find me and, and drill away.